All right, y'all, the October challenge has started. Me and Lyric are getting it in with Kiara Lachey on ifyoucanmove.com. Sign up for the October challenge before it's over or sign up for the online gym if you're trying to get in shape, okay? Girlfriend will get you together in 30 minutes or less most of the time, okay? I'm telling y'all, most of the workouts are less than 30 minutes. Get you in, get you out, get you some real results, okay? And please don't forget to check out TLC products, okay? They tell y'all it's a scam, but they lied, okay? I'm telling y'all. You got stomach issues, you ever feel like you know you're a little constipated, or your stomach hurt, a little nauseous, anything like that. That ISO T, any of the flavors is so helpful. So helpful. And Nutra Burst definitely gets your energy where you need it to be throughout the day. I promise y'all, I will not lie to you, okay? Because we're going through this challenge, we're working out every day this month, okay? So I need all the help I can get. <laughs> so y'all check down below in the description box where you can get the links to everything. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another Real Housewives of Potomac review, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, this episode was a lot. First of all, we gonna start with our girl, Miss Karen Huger. Okay, Woodman, I am a Woodman, yes. Okay, y'all, Karen actually gave me life this episode, okay? So first of all, she calls Ashley and Giselle to invite them to Surrey County because she's going to be in the homecoming parade and she would love to show them where she's from. And we finally get to see you know, Karen's upbringing and in, in, in her home and where she's from in the farm she grew up on. We know that she's a farmer's daughter, but I think, um, you know, that seems to be dressed in some type of hick dressing or costumage, you know. Even Giselle was like, you know, I imagine everybody with straw in their mouth and overalls and a cowboy hat, like everybody, everywhere. And it's just kind of like, yeah, no, no, it's Virginia. It's Virginia, you know. There, there are definitely um, sophisticated people in Virginia. I know that there are a lot of, you know, backwoods towns and stuff like that. But usually, you know, just because it's a country place, it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody is walking around with straw in their mouth. But okay, Giselle, fine. I mean, you, I, where are you from exactly? Because I know you try to claim New Orleans, but it doesn't feel that way. Ashley shows up to Karen's house first before they, you know, head to Surrey, which is two hours away. Ashley is cute. Okay, Ashley is cute. I loved her outfit. I was like, all right, Ashley, you ain't come to play, man. I'm right, look a little, little booty, look a little tooty. I was like, well, all right. She was cute though, okay? I, I was here for her outfit. And she says that she left baby Dean at home and you know, she told Michael to be on his best behavior. She even slid a little tracker up his ass and he didn't even feel it. I was like, that's a little joke. Your husband likes to get pegged, right? Okay, so. Here's the thing about that. I feel like she wanted to leave the baby the last time, but she didn't have the leverage. This time, Ashley had leverage to say, oh no, I'm gonna go on this trip. You gonna stay yo in the dog house ass here with this baby. Okay, Michael? Like, that's how that conversation went. Like, right now, Ashley is walking around with the power of every woman that is almost entitled to 50%. Okay, like just just real real big boss energy about Ashley right now after Michael has you know continued to mess up as it pertains to their relationship and embarrassing her and having you know more cheatations for public fodder which always looks good in the divorce. Then Giselle shows up and Ray grabs Karen's luggage and says, I'm not trying to rush you out, but you know it's time to go. <laughs> okay, ushers everybody to the car. All right, and Karen tries to kiss him goodbye and he goes Mwah, and boom and closes the door and Bravo shows it from three different angles. Bop, bop, bop. I was like, why y'all doing Karen like this? Y'all know Ray is, I think, constantly like trying to embarrass her on camera on purpose at this point. Now that we understand what his issue is with her, that she's not at home cooking his meals anymore and she's feeling herself based off what I've seen in a preview to the upcoming you know, episode and all of that, I feel like Ray, whenever they're on camera, is trying to make Karen feel bad. It's his passive aggressive way of getting even with her for being, you know, a different person than the woman that he married. So they head to Wooden Plantation, and this is when we get the backstory on Karen's family, and this is when my ears pipe up, okay? Because I have read about how hard it was 
for black folks to retain the land and the farms that they actually owned after the 20s and the 30s. Like right after slavery, during Reconstruction, black people owned a lot of land and had actually purchased a great number of farmlands because that's what they did. Black people farmed land, okay? In slavery, we did it and after it was a business for us. And eventually, a lot of us were able to buy the properties and farms and plantations in which we lived, okay? Or even buying other plantations and farmlands, you know, as a way to make money because it's what black people knew how to do, okay? now. What ends up happening is you have the, the crash in 1920, okay, what was it, 1922 or 1921, whatever the stock market crash that happened in the 20s, okay? When that happened, the government put in subsidized loans and stuff like that to help people stay afloat, okay? The racism comes in when black people are owning a lot of land and, and gaining a lot of prestige, and we saw like in Tulsa and, and in down there in Florida and a lot of places where black people had created townships, created independent, you know, places of living separate from white folks, and white folks would come and burn the shit down basically okay and that's basically what happened in a actual law agricultural law way with african-american farmers okay it made it harder for them to get the loans because the people who were in charge of giving the loans didn't want to give them to black people in order to help them keep their land so they put a lot of things into place once the agricultural laws came into existence it made it harder for black people to keep their land okay we went from owning like what was it like 30 uh i want to say I, I feel like I'm gonna get the number wrong because I feel like I remember reading it. They said that black people owned like 30% of the farmland and over the years that number has gone down dramatically uh, in comparison to white folks and how they, you know, have really only gone down in a, you know, maybe a little bit of a percentage. But um, yeah, anyway, with that being said and that backstory, it is incredibly impressive that Karen's family not only bought the plantation that they lived on, but continued to farm the land and expanded it to the point of servicing the entire country and abroad. Like, that is a big deal. And honestly, to me, it means that Karen very much is in, you know, a right of her grand dame persona, okay? I like Karen for the most part. She's messy, but I like Karen, okay? And I feel like, when people, you know, see themselves in a certain light, yeah, sometimes people have a lot of, you know, uh, delusions of grandeur and all of that type of stuff. But I don't think that's where Karen is coming from. And seeing her upbringing, I can understand why she feels the way she does and she carries herself the way she does because she probably did grow up feeling like a little princess. When you a black girl with, you know, living in the South, but your family, you know, farms most for most of the town and you have this nice house and people, you know, know who you are because you the, you know, wooden, the wooden plantation, the black people that own that plant. Like people, black people in, in towns and in around areas where they live know about stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? They know about the black people that own the farm because it's not a lot of black people that still own farms and, and work land to that extent. So I, I really take my hat off to Karen and her family and I feel like I was very happy that we were able to see it. Filler episode or not, I think that, you know, people who understand um, what farming has been for black people in this country will understand how important it is that they still own and retain the use of the farm in the land so you know shout out to her family but we see her family and they're happy to see her they were all waiting for her they're looking at old pictures and telling stories and then they get on the, uh the tractor and go and harvest some corn and karen said corn we try it's all farmed on our land and i was like i know that's right karen okay when she gets down off the tractor ashley gets a call from monique and Monique says that she's drained from everything that has happened and she's just really tired. She wished that she was there with them. Um, but ultimately, she feels that if it wasn't her, it would be somebody else as it pertains to this fight with Candace. And I did feel like, you know, you know, not taking any responsibility. Like in this moment right now, you saying that is you not taking any responsibility, feeling like she was the only person that was antagonizing in that fight. You were also in her face saying stuff as well, Monique, okay? Which I know you know. 
I know you know that, all right? So this moment right here, um, honestly, I think whenever she knows Giselle is around, <laughs> she gets defensive, to be honest. I think she gets defensive and gets guarded, you know, rightfully so, because nobody is safe around the green-eyed monster. Giselle loves to kick people while they're down, okay? And I feel like she also likes to rub people's faces and shit, and she likes to grandstand and act as if she's above it, when really you do everything but put your hands on people. But you do very detrimental things when you start to try to, you know, get involved in people's family lives because you're unhappy with your situation, Giselle which we know is what you are doing with this Monique situation. Monique may be wrong for the way she's handling Candace, but trust and believe we see you, bitch. Karen admits that she told Candace that I would be looking, you know, into some legalities for the situation. And listen, I've talked about this on Instagram, you guys. I, in, in no way, shape, or form, like, you know, really condone putting your hands on people because you can't deal with a verbal altercation, okay? But I also feel like that's not what this was. I don't believe that Candace was attacked. <laughs> and I just don't feel that way. So the idea that she, you know, should go and press charges, even though I feel like, you know, everybody should always be ready for somebody to sue you once you didn't put your hands on them, especially in this type of arena, like you should just be ready for that. I still feel like once you sign up for reality TV, as long as, you know, you are right after the fight, like it should just be what it is. Like, I don't think that they needed to do this. And I'm glad that, you know, eventually, once everybody had went to court, the judge threw everything out because I feel like y'all had equal part in, in, in that altercation. Maybe not the physical, but definitely in the altercation. And what I mean by that is if you get in somebody's face, if you engage in an altercation, if you seem as if you are not scared of someone putting their hands on you, you did not get attacked. You got into an altercation and ended up getting your ass whipped. And listen, Monique has to be ready for the consequences of whipping ass, which is that people will try to sue you and come for you for a bag. And you know this. And I feel like she said this in the past, but I feel like Monique is going through a lot right now, you know, behind the scenes in her life, you know, at this age, whatever, just like everybody else. And sometimes you don't work well under pressure. Sometimes it just ain't the day for this shit. And I feel like that's what Monique, you know, got caught up in. Got caught up putting all her anger out on the wrong person because she had all of this other shit going on and all of these exter external forces at play. You know what I'm saying? But she still is responsible for her own actions in this situation, okay? Please don't get it twisted. You were wrong for putting your hands on Candace, for flipping her hair, and for dragging her. But everybody else played a part and I just really I really wish somebody is going to bring attention to the fact that Giselle pushed Monique during that fight which is why she went to pull Candace because she thought that that pull was Candace pulling her but it was Giselle pulling her I'm, I'm sorry not push pull because she and you can actually see her grip Monique's vest and pull it but y'all I'm tired of getting into the logistics of the fight because at this point it doesn't even matter you know um at the end of the day the video is on tape without edit I just think that the judge probably saw several different angles of this fight but like I said I think they both played a part in the altercation but to take it to the court level I think is when everybody fucks up and I'm gonna tell you why because I feel like Monique is about to come to the conclusion after a while that she was up, you know, and she was sorry and wanted to apologize, right? But then she finds out that Candace is going to press charges. So now she has to press charges. So the conversation that should have been had before the fight even happened will not happen now. You know what I'm saying? Because now we pressing charges, so we really can't talk to one another. So I feel like it was unfortunate and the situation could have been allowed to, you know, like I feel like it's a reality show. They should have been forced to sit down in front of one another at one point and talk and get past it and get over it and give us some good TV in the process. It might have took a few meetings, but I feel like they should have just forced them to sit down and talk about it. But y'all know how it is when somebody can't fight. They always want press charges. Plus, Karen telling Candace to press charges, her mama telling her to press charges. I think if she didn't have people in her ear, she may not have chosen to do that, okay? But either way, you know, 
It's what happened. Giselle says that she would have pressed charges against Monique that day. Um, and we know you would have, but we also know that you, you wouldn't have gotten in her face. <laughs> Not without Lil' Candace in front of you. So then we see Karen riding in her parade, right? And Giselle was like, you know, oh, they got enough room for us in the car. And she was like, no, 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 no. You're here as spectators. I'm in the parade, darling. I'm in the parade, darling. Okay, Giselle just really needs to go and sit down. I don't know why she thinks that she would be the word in Surrey, Virginia. I don't know why. She's not even the word in New Orleans. Nobody cared that she was walking up and down the street with a tambourine in her ass. Ugh. I was like, you ain't never lie. I still don't know if she from here. <laughs> Say what you will, okay, being light-skinned and having light eyes does not mean that you are from New Orleans. Your peppy in them might be from New Orleans, but you feel like you from Atlanta or some other surrounding area. While Karen is riding, you know, in the parade, Giselle, I think, is low-key hating on her. You know, oh, she's, you know, a big fish in a small pond, and she finally got out, so I guess we should be rejoicing in that. Like, girl, <laughs> whatever. Okay, because who cares about you? Them church people don't like you. Okay, and I wouldn't want you administering to me with your nasty attitude and your judgmental disposition, bitch. You can't administer nothing to me. So I don't understand, you know, where she comes from thinking that she's been put on some pedestal somewhere and everybody else is just tripping. <laughs> like, no, uh, Karen actually seems to, you know, really be somebody where she from. I don't know about you. Ashley talks about how she feels as if she is in the same situation with Karen where now that she's had her baby, she is a different woman than she was when Michael married her. And just like, you know, Karen is a different woman from when Ray married her and Michael better get his life. You know, he better make sure that he is on his P's and Q's because Ashley is not afraid to take her babies and it's money and skedaddle. Then they go to Karen's family's church where, you know, she buried her family. And while she's there, she just gets really full, you know. And I really understood. When she went back there and she was crying, I instantly started to tear up. Because I know what it's like, you know. Um, I miss my daddy all the time. It's hard. And, and so soon after, you know, it's only been, what, like a year or two since her people died. Like, you still, you know, have a hard time with it. You still have... Very emotional moments. I still have emotional moments. My daddy been dead for uh, going on 11 years now. And it don't, it don't feel like it's been that long, but it's been a long time, you know? It's just crazy when you lose parents, you know? But at least Giselle in her terrible wig and Ashley in her nice little butt were able to hug her and show her, and show her some type of, you know, comfort and sympathy in that moment. But Karen comes back out, you know, and she's like, you know, it's just a full circle moment for me. And I was like, I know that's right. Okay, we love a good full circle moment. So y'all, Wendy meets with her sister. Child, <laughs> the wig, Lord, the wig. Oh, Lord. So she basically talks to her sister, who's also a surgeon, about how she wants to talk to her mom about not working at Johns Hopkins anymore. She wants to just be a political commentator full time and do her reality show thing full time. And she doesn't know how her mom will react to that because in Nigerian culture, it's all about academia. It's all about being a doctor, being a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? It's all about that. And for her mom, it gives her a lot of prestige in Nigeria for her children, you know, both being people with doctorate degrees. Um, I understand that, okay? I myself come from a family where academia was very, very important. It was just understood you were going to college the whole nine. Um, now that we're all older, I feel like we might see the situation differently. But in certain cultures, um, especially in cultures outside of, you know, the U.S., they feel like education and specifically education here in America is, you know, top notch and something to be proud and to scream from the mountaintops about my children are doctors. You know what I'm saying? So it's a it's a big deal in their culture. And I understand that that is not lost upon me. However, I still feel as if Wendy is an adult. You and your husband are, you know, uh, the ones taking care of you and your family. Whatever decision you decide to make, you're going to have to make and your mom is just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> I mean, like you, you 30 something years old with three kids and a husband, like she'll be OK. And if she not, it's not like y'all not used to family members, you know, not talking to y'all since his family don't talk to y'all neither, which I guess is probably why she's scared because she doesn't want what happened with his 
people to happen with hers. But, you know, you got to hope that your mom won't be like that. You got to hope that your mom won't want to sacrifice you and, you know, the grandkids just so she can say that you're still working at Johns Hopkins. It's not a waste. You did that shit. Like, it, it, you did it. You know, but that doesn't mean you have to stay in that space. And at some point, your life has to be about your own happiness and not, you know, what your parents want. So her sister just tells her, you know, she's going to have to suck it up and tell her and it'll be fine. Robin and Candace talk, you guys. I felt so bad for Candace because I know what it feels like after you didn't fought, especially if you fought somebody that you really care about and then you find out that they have no remorse. You know, it's just, it, it's really unfortunate and I feel bad for Candace and I really wish that somebody would have gave Candace a hug in this scene, to be honest, okay? Robin showed up looking a mess and she tells Candace that Monique wasn't remorseful in the meeting and then she says she's disappointed in Karen for not expressing disappointment in Monique, which is a lie because she said to Monique, you fucked up. She said that to her. So I don't know what the hell Robin is talking about, but I feel like Robin is always trying to create, you know, issue with Karen. Like she just always seems to have Karen in her crosshairs for some reason. Candace says that Karen told her she would press charges on Monique if it was up to her. And, you know, of course, that's going to cause issue amongst the three of them, Candace, Monique, and Karen. Because they're going to want Karen to pick a side, and Karen wants to be neutral. Candace is now thinking about, you know, pressing charges because she feels like she's had trauma from the situation. But the thing that killed me is she was like violation of her personal space. And I'm like, I mean, you don't see how you also violated her personal space? Never mind. <laughs> I'm just going to let it go, y'all. And then they discuss how Robin owes the IRS $90,000 and it comes to mind how she ran Karen through the coals, okay? Ran a raked her through the hot coals when all of this came out about Ray and her and Ray Owen uh, taxes. And Karen is the one who used her Real Housewives of Potomac money and any other money that she had saved up to help him get out of that tax situation. And nobody, you know, gave her a pat on the back. They always threw it in her face and made fun of her for it. And now come to find out Robin's dumb ass is doing her own taxes, did them wrong, and now was hit with penalties. I was like, why would you be doing your own taxes, making hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on Real Housewives? of Potomac make it make sense Robin stop trying to be so damn cheap okay that's why you know that's why wine is apprehensive right now because Lord knows he feel like he can't trust you with not near another thing okay so she called herself meeting up with wine on some you know little nasty freaky stuff where she dressed up in a wig and they meet down at the bar and she still had the tag on her coat so I guess she's gonna return it the next day along with that terrible wig. Juan laughed at her the whole time but you know he seemed to be in it a tad bit but they talk about the tag situation and Juan was like you know that's on you. <laughs> Which, me, which makes me believe that they're not married for a reason, okay? Uh, I think that they filed separately and I think that their financials have probably been separate. They probably both uh, contribute to their household, but I believe ever since she, you know, ruined their money the first time, he's probably kept his ducats separate from hers. She thanks him for being so understanding. I'm like, sure. Also this episode, we saw that Giselle uh, okayed Juan's choice of ring for Robin because y'all know he's planning to propose to her and he does propose to her. And I just kind of feel like when they gonna get married though? When they gonna get married though? Cause technically they've been living together this whole time. So what's the difference between just going down to the justice of the peace? Like why we gotta go through all of the pomp and circumstance this time? You know, like I just kind of feel like, I don't know if it's as solidified as they make it out to, you know, to be. I don't know if they really want it like that. <laughs> I think um, maybe Robin may and Juan probably feels like it's the best decision for him. She's ride or die and all of that. But I don't know if that is really what he wants because I don't know why y'all haven't just done it yet. And then here comes the tax situation. And now y'all can't go and buy a house together because you owe people money. Like it's just another thing to go against them being together as far as I'm concerned. Candace and her mom go to the uh, dog pound to get a dog. And they talk about the Monique situation and her mom is just like, you know, it's unacceptable that she thinks she can put her hands on you. I'm like, I know that's right. She not your mama. Your mama can knock the shit out you upside the head with a purse. But uh, Monique, on the other hand, that's different, which I do agree. It's a different situation when your mama puts her hands on you versus one of your friends. But still, you know, it's a, it's a little bit hypocritical of the mama 
mama to be so taken aback talking about being in the gutter. Like, oh, okay. And I still feel as if being down in the gutter means that, you know, this idea that Candace was attacked. Her mom is saying, you know, I don't like that you were attacked. She was not attacked. <laughs> I don't agree with that, y'all. I'm sorry. And that's just how I feel about it. But either way, at this point, the attorneys are going to be involved. Monique talks to her pastor, right? She says she needs to understand how she allowed someone to push her outside of her normal behavior. So her pastor comes in with his wife and sits down and basically tells her everything that we've all been saying that she projected her issues onto Candace. It wasn't really about Candace. It was about everything that Monique has going on. Okay, Monique is constantly having to fight and prove herself to people. And she's now in a group of girls that no matter what she does, it is never good enough. And I think it is a constant you know, place of contention for her that she knows how to impress everybody, but she can't seem to impress these hoes. I don't know why she care, but I understand that it's an innate thing to want to be liked. You know, I want to be liked as well. And she's a Libra. I understand that I'm a Gemini. We understand each other. Okay. I'm a Libra moon child. I get it. Okay. Um, but ultimately I'm glad that the pastor made her realize that it was more about her own issues and what she's going through than about Candace and that Candace didn't deserve that, okay? So she's crying about it and saying that Candace, you know, really didn't deserve it and she wants to talk to her about it. And I'm glad the pastor, you know, was able to talk her through it and hold the mirror up to her face because I feel like she needed to see that, especially when she was saying that Candace was being combative. I was like, I feel like the entire season, Candace might be passive aggressive, but combative, I don't think so. I think you've been combative more than anything, especially these past few episodes, Monique. So I feel like I'm glad he said to her, you're projecting, you saying that she's combative, but really you're the one that's combative. And a lot of the times, it's not even that it's just us. We also um, influence the people we're around or we choose the people we're around. So a lot of times they end up being a mirror of us because we choose them. We pick them. You know what I'm saying? To be in our face, to be in our circle and, you know, end up exhibiting some of the same negative attributes as they do, you know, and vice versa. I feel like both Candace and Monique brought themselves down to a level beneath both of them. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want them to fight and I'm still not happy about this situation. I really want them to talk it out and get past it. And I want everybody to redirect this energy towards Giselle. Okay. I'm over it, you know? I'm, I'm just, I'm over it. And I want Robin off the show and replaced with somebody else. She can be Giselle's friend to the show. That's all she is anyway. She ain't bringing nothing else. Like, even a little tax lien situation was a little yang, yang, yang in between the, the, the you know, the lines. Like, nobody even really cares. Y'all blew Karen's tax shit out of proportion for episodes and episodes and episodes. Robin stuff comes out and it's just like a cliff note. Like, oh, Robin had a $90,000 tax lien. Next episode. Like... <laughs> <laughs> whatever okay with Monique being in the place that she's in right now at the end of the episode I feel like once the charges were pressed all of that went out the window <laughs> like I feel like that went out the window and now I'm mad again and it's back to you know no remorse and yeah I beat her ass so what <laughs> it's unfortunate y'all it's really unfortunate the way stuff happens in a way I feel like everybody was influencing you know uh the two of them in one way or another you know instead of them really having the conversations the fallout whatever between the two of them it's them and everybody else making the situation worse than it already is you know what i'm saying <sighs> But anyway, y'all, that was Real Housewives of Potomac. I hope y'all enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Check out my Ratchet review and my Halloween movie review for The Craft. We'll be doing Vampire in Brooklyn this week, and I hope to see y'all there for the review and for the members of the Patreons for the watch-along. Um, I'm probably going to try to do it on Thursday, Thursday evening, okay? So I'll see y'all in. I love y'all. Mwah!